an Abba of Rome. This is almost certainly Arsenius. There was a monk from Rome who lived at Scites near the church. He had a slave to serve him. The priest, knowing his bad health and the comfort in which he used to live, sent him what he needed of whatever anyone brought to the church. Having lived twenty-five years at Scites, he had acquired the gift of insight, and he became famous. One of the great Egyptians heard about him and came to see him, thinking he would find him leading a life of great corporal austerity. He entered and greeted him. They said the prayer and sat down. Now the Egyptian saw he was wearing fine clothing, and that he possessed a bed with a coverlet and a small pillow. He saw that his feet were clean and shod in sandals. Noticing all this, he was shocked, because such a way of life is not usual in that district. Much greater austerity is required. Now the old man had the gift of insight, and he understood that he was shocked. And so he said to him who served him, We will celebrate a feast today for the Abba's sake. There were a few vegetables, and he cooked them, and at the appointed hour they rose and ate. The old man had a little wine also, because of his illness, so they drank some. When evening came, they recited the twelve psalms and went to sleep. They did the same thing during the night. On rising at dawn, the Egyptian said to him, Pray for me, and he went away without being edified. When he had gone a short distance, the old man, wishing to edify him, sent someone to bring him back. On his arrival, he received him once again with joy and asked him, Of what country are you? He said, Egypt. And of what city? I am not a citizen at all. And what was your work in the village? I was a herdsman. Where did you sleep? He replied, In the field. Did you have anything to lie upon? He said, Would I go and put a bed under myself in a field? But how did you sleep? He said, On the bare ground. The old man said next, What was your food in the fields, and what wine did you drink? He replied, Is there food and drink in the fields? But how did you live? I ate dry bread, and, if I found any, green herbs and water. The old man replied, Great hardship! Was there a bathhouse for washing in the village? He replied, No, only the river, when we wanted it. After the old man had learnt all this and knew of the hardness of his former life, he told him his own former way of life when he was in the world, with the intention of helping him. I, the poor man whom you see, am of the great city of Rome, and I was a great man in the palace of the emperor. When the Egyptian heard the beginning of these words, he was filled with compunction and listened attentively to what the other was saying. He continued, Then I left the city and came to this desert. I, whom you see, had great houses and many riches, and having despised them, I have come to this little cell. I, whom you see, had beds all of gold, with coverings of great value, and, in exchange for that, God has given me this little bed and this skin. Moreover, my clothes were the most expensive kind, and in their stead I wear these garments of no value. Again, at my table there was much gold, and instead of that God has given me this little dish of vegetables and a cup of wine. There were many slaves to serve me, and see how in exchange for that God troubles this old man to serve me. Instead of the bathhouse... I throw a little water over my feet, and wear sandals because of my weakness. Instead of music and lyres, I say the twelve psalms, and the same at night. Instead of the sins I used to commit, I now say my rule of prayer. So then I beg you, Abba, do not be shocked at my weakness. Hearing this, the Egyptian came to his senses and said, Woe to me! For after so much hardship in the world, 
I have found ease, and what I did not have before, that I now possess. While after so great ease, you have come to humility and poverty. Greatly edified, he withdrew, and he became his friend, and often went to him for help. For he was a man full of discernment, and the good odor of the Holy Spirit. The same monk used to say that there was a certain old man who had a good disciple. Through narrow-mindedness, he drove him outside with his sheepskin. The brother remained sitting outside. When the old man opened the door, he found him sitting, and he repented, saying, O Father, the humility of your patience has overcome my narrow-mindedness. Come inside, and from now on you are the old man and the father, and I am the younger and the disciple. Rufus A brother asked Abba Rufus, What is interior peace, and what use is it? The old man said, Interior peace means to remain sitting in one cell with fear and knowledge of God holding far off the remembrance of wrongs suffered and pride of spirit. Such interior peace brings forth all the virtues, preserves the monk from the burning darts of the enemy, and does not allow him to be wounded by them. Yes, brother, acquire it. Keep in mind your future death, remembering that you do not know at what hour the thief will come. Likewise, Be watchful over your soul. Abba Rufus said, He who remains sitting at the feet of his spiritual father receives a greater reward than he who lives alone in the desert. He added that one of the fathers said, I have seen four orders in heaven. In the first order is the sick man who gives thanks to God. In the second, the man who observes hospitality and for that reason, gets up to serve. In the third, the man who crosses the desert without seeing anyone. In the fourth, the man who obeys his father and remains in submission to him for the Lord's sake. The one who was living in submission was wearing a chain of gold and a shield and had greater honor than all the others. I said to him, who was guiding me, Why does the one who is least have more glory than the others? He answered me, He who practices hospitality acts according to his own will, but the last one possesses obedience. Having abandoned all his desires, he depends on God and his own Father. It is because of this that he has received more glory than the others. See, my child, how good obedience is when it is undertaken for the Lord. You have partly understood the elements of this virtue, my children. O obedience, salvation of the faithful! O obedience, mother of all virtues! O obedience, discloser of the kingdom! O obedience, opening the heavens and making men to ascend there from the earth! O obedience, Food of all the saints, whose milk they have sucked, through you they have become perfect. O obedience, companion of the angels. Romanos Abba Romanos, who was at the point of death, his disciples gathered round him and said, How ought we to conduct ourselves? The old man said to them, I do not think I have ever told one of you to do something without having first made the decision not to get angry if what I said were not done, and so we have lived in peace all our days. Seesoys A brother whom another brother had wronged came to see Abba Seesoys and said to him, My brother has hurt me, and I want to avenge myself. The old man pleaded with him, saying, No, my child, leave vengeance to God. He said to him, I shall not rest until I have avenged myself. The old man said, Brother, let us pray. Then the old man stood up and said, God, we no longer need you to care for us, since we do justice for ourselves. 
Hearing these words, the brothers fell at the old man's feet, saying, I will no longer seek justice for my brother. Forgive me, Abba. A brother asked Abba Sisois, saying, What should I do? When I go to church, often there is an agape there, after the service, and they make me stay for it. The old man said to him, It is a difficult question. Then Abraham, his disciple, said, If the gathering takes place on Saturday or Sunday, and a brother drinks three cups of wine, is that not a lot? The old man said, If Satan is not in it, it is not much. Abba Sisoyes' disciple said to him, Father, you are growing old. Let us now go back nearer to inhabited country. The old man said to him, Let us go where there are no women. His disciple said to him, Where is there a place where there are no women except the desert? So the old man said, Take me to the desert. Abba Sisois' disciple often said to him, Abba, get up and let us eat. And he would say to him, Have we not eaten, my child? He would reply, No, father. Then the old man would say, If we have not eaten, bring the food and we will eat. Abba Sisois expressed himself freely one day, saying, Have confidence. For thirty years I have not prayed to God about my faults, but I have made this prayer to him, Lord Jesus, save me from my tongue. And until now every day I fall because of it and commit sin. A brother said to Abba Sisois, How is it that the passions do not leave me? The old man said, Their tools are inside you. Give them their pay, and they will go. Abba Sisoyes was living for a time on the mountain of Abba Antony, and his disciple was a long time coming, so he did not see anyone for ten months. Now while he was walking on the mountain, he met a Pharaonite who was hunting wild animals. The old man said to him, Where have you come from, and how long have you been here? He replied, Indeed, Abba, I have been eleven months on this mountain, and I have not seen anyone except you. Hearing this, the old man entered his cell and beat his breast, saying, Look, Sisois, you thought you had done something special, but you have not even equaled this layman. There was a liturgy on the mountain of Abba Antony, and they had a small bottle of wine there. One of the old men took a jug and a cup and offered some to Abba Sisois. He drank some. A second time, he also accepted some. But when he was offered some a third time, he did not accept it, saying, Stop, brother, don't you know that it is of Satan? One of the brothers went to see Abba Sisois on Abba Anthony's mountain. While they were talking, he said to Abba Sisois, Have you already reached Abba Anthony's stature, father? The old man said to him, If I had one of Abba Anthony's thoughts, I should become all flame. But I do not know a man who with difficulty is able to bear Anthony's thoughts. One of the inhabitants of the Thebaid came to see Abba Sisois one day because he wanted to become a monk. The old man asked him if he had any relations in the world. He replied, I have a son. The old man said, Go and throw him into the river, and then you will become a monk. As he went to throw him in, the old man sent a brother in haste to prevent him. The brother said, Stop, what are you doing? But the other said to him, The Abba told me to throw him in. So the brother said, But afterwards he said, Do not throw him in. So he left his son and went to find the old man, and he became a monk, tested by obedience. A brother asked Abba Sisois, Did Satan pursue them like this in the early days? The old man said to him, He does this more at the present time, because his time is nearly finished, and he is enraged. Abraham, Abba Sisois' disciple, was tempted one day by the devil, and the old man saw that he had given way. Standing up, he stretched his hands towards heaven, saying, God, Whether you will or whether you will not, 
I will not let you alone till you have healed him. And immediately the brother was healed. A brother said to Abba Sisois, I am aware that the remembrance of God stays with me. The old man said to him, It is no great thing to be with God in your thoughts, but it is a great thing to see yourself as inferior to all creatures. It is this, coupled with hard work, that leads to humility. It was said of Abba Sisois that when he was at the point of death, while the fathers were sitting beside him, his face shone like the sun. He said to them, Look, Abba Anthony is coming. A little later he said, Look, the choir of the prophets is coming. Again his countenance shone with brightness, and he said, Look, the choir of apostles is coming. His countenance increased in brightness, and lo, he spoke with someone. Then the old man asked him, With whom are you speaking, father? He said, Look, the angels are coming to fetch me, and I am begging them to let me do a little penance. The old man said to him, You have no need to do penance, father. But the old man said to them, Truly, I do not think I have even made a beginning yet. Now they all knew that he was perfect. Once more his countenance suddenly became like the sun, and they were all filled with fear. He said to them, Look, the Lord is coming, and he is saying, Bring me a vessel from the desert. Then there was a flash of lightning, and all the house was filled with a sweet odor. Abba Adelphius, Bishop of Neilopolis, went to find Abba Sisois on the mountain of Abba Antony. When they were ready to leave, before setting out on the road, Abba Sisois made them eat before morning. Now it was a fast day. As he was setting the table, behold, some brothers came and knocked on the door. He said to his disciple, Give them a little to eat, for they are tired. Abba Adelphius said to him, No, don't do that in case they say that Abba Sisois eats before morning. So the old man thought about it, and then said to the brother, Go on, give them something. Now when they saw the food, they said, Have you visitors? And is that why the old man is eating with you? The brother replied, It was so. Then they were very distressed, and they said, May God forgive you, because you have let the old man eat now. Do you not know that because of this he will mortify himself for a long time? Hearing this, the bishop did penance before the old man, saying, Forgive me, Abba, for I reasoned on a human level while you do the work of God. Abba Sisoy said to him, If God does not glorify a man, the glory of men is without value. Some brothers went to see Abba Sisoy to hear a word from him. But he did not speak to them, saying, Excuse me. Seeing his little baskets, the visitors asked his disciple Abraham, What do you do with these little baskets? He said, We sell them here and there. Hearing this, the old man said, Even Sisoyas eats now and then. By these words, the visitors were greatly helped, and they returned with joy, edified by his humility. Abba Amun of Raitu asked Abba Sisois, When I read the scriptures, my mind is wholly concentrated on the words so that I may have something to say if I am asked. The old man said to him, That is not necessary. It is better to enrich yourself through purity of spirit and to be without anxiety and then to speak. A secular who had a son came to see Abba Sisois on Abba Anthony's mountain. On the way, it happened that his son died. He was not troubled by this, but brought him with confidence to the old man, and bowed down with his son, as though making prostration, so that he would be blessed by the old man. Then the father stood up, left the child at the old man's feet, and went outside. The old man, thinking that the boy was bowing, said to him, Get up, go outside, for he did not know that he was dead. Immediately the boy stood up and went out. When he saw it, his father was filled with amazement 
and went back inside. He bowed before the old man and told him the whole story. When he heard it, the old man was filled with regret, for he had not intended that to happen. So the disciple asked the father of the child not to speak of it to anyone before the old man's death. Three old men came to see Abba Sisois, having heard about him. The first said to him, Father, how shall I save myself from the river of fire? He did not answer him. The second said to him, Father, how can I be saved from the gnashing of teeth and the worm which dieth not? The third said, Father, what shall I do? For the remembrance of the outer darkness is killing me. By way of reply, the old man said to them, For my part, I do not keep in mind the remembrance of any of these things, for God is compassionate, and I hope that he will show me his mercy. Hearing this, the old man went back offended. But the old man, not wishing to let them go away hurt, said to them, Blessed are you, my brothers, truly I envy you. The first speaks of the river of fire, the second of hell, and the third of darkness. Now, if your spirit is filled with such remembrances, it is impossible for you to sin. What shall I do then? I am hard of heart, and to whom it has not been granted so much as to know whether there is a punishment for men. No doubt it is because of this that I am sinning all the time. They prostrated themselves before him and said, Now we have seen exactly that of which we have heard tell. They asked Abba Sisois, If a brother sins, surely he must do penance for a year. He replied, That is a hard saying. The visitor said, For six months? He replied, That is a great deal. They said, For forty days. He said, That is a great deal too. They said to him, What then? If a brother falls, and the agape is about to be offered, should he simply come to the agape too? The old man said to them, No, he needs to do penance for a few days. But I trust in God that if such a man does penance with his whole heart, God will receive him even in three days. When Abba Sisois went to Klisma one day, some seculars came to see him. Though they talked a great deal, he did not answer them by so much as a word. Later one of them said, Why do you bother the old man? He does not eat, that is why he cannot speak. The old man replied, For my part, I eat when the need arises. Abba Joseph asked Abba Sisois, For how long must a man cut away the passions? The old man said to him, Do you want to know how long? Abba Joseph answered, Yes. Then the old man said to him, So long as a passion attacks you, cut it away at once. A brother asked Abba Sisois of Petra how to live, and the old man said to him, Daniel said, Do not eat the bread of desires. It was said of Abba Sisois that when he was sitting in the cell, he would always close the door. One day some Arians came to see Abba Sisois on Abba Anthony's mountain, and they began to speak against the Orthodox faith. The old man gave them no warning, but he called his disciple and said to him, Abraham, bring me the book of St. Athanasius and read it. Then they were silent as their heresy was unmasked, and he sent them away in peace. Abba Amun of Raitu came to Klisma one day to meet Abba Sisois. Seeing that Abba Sisois was grieved because he had left the desert, Abba Amun said to him, Abba, why grieve about it? What would you do in the desert, now you are so old? The old man pondered this sorrowfully, and said to him, What are you saying to me, Amun? Was not the mere liberty of my soul enough for me in the desert? Abba Sisois was sitting in his cell one day. His disciple knocked on the door, and the old man shouted to him, saying, 
Go away, Abraham, do not come in. From now on I have no time for the things of this world. A brother asked Abba Sisois, Why did you leave Skitis, where you lived with Abba Or, and come to live here? The old man said, At the time when Skitis became crowded, I heard that Anthony was dead, and I got up and came here to the mountain. Finding the place peaceful, I have settled here for a little while. The brother said to him, How long have you been here? The old man said to him, Seventy-two years. He also said, When there is someone who takes care of you, you are not to give him orders. A brother asked Abba Sisois, If we are walking along the road, and the guide leads us astray, ought we to tell him so? The old man answered, No. Then the brother said, Should we let him lead us astray then? The old man said to him, What else? Will you take a stick to beat him? I know some brethren who were walking and the guide misled them the whole night. There were twelve of them, and they all knew that they were lost, and each one struggled not to say so. When day came, and the guide realized that they had lost their way, and said to them, Forgive me, but I am lost. They all said to him, We knew that, but we kept silence. Hearing this, he was filled with wonder and said, Even to the point of death, the brothers control themselves so as not to speak. And he gave glory to God. The length of the road on which they had gone astray was twelve miles. One day the Saracens came and robbed the old man and his brother. As he was setting off into the desert to find something to eat, the old man found some camel dung, and having broken it up, he found some grains of barley in it. He ate a grain and put the other into his mouth. His brother came and saw him in the act of eating and said to him, Is this charity to find food and to eat it along without having called me? Abba Sisoy said to him, I have not wronged you. Brother, here is your share which I have kept in my hand. They said Abba Sisois the Theban dwelt at Calamon of Arsinoi. Another old man was ill there in the other Lavra, and when he heard of it, Abba Sisois was very sorry. Now Abba Sisois used to fast for two days at a time, so there was one day when he did not eat. When he heard about the old man's illness, he said to himself, What shall I do? If I go and see him, I am afraid the brethren will compel me to eat. But if I wait until tomorrow, I am afraid he may die. This is what I will do. I will go, and I will not eat. So he went fasting, both fulfilling the commandment of God, and yet not relaxing his way of life for the sake of God. One of the fathers related of Abba Sisois of Calamon, that wishing to overcome sleep one day, he hung himself over the precipice of Petra. An angel came to take him down, and ordered him not to do that again, and not to transmit such teaching to others. One of the fathers asked Abba Sisois, If I am sitting in the desert, and a barbarian comes to kill me, and if I am stronger than him, shall I kill him? The old man said to him, No, leave him to God. In fact, whatever the trial is which comes to a man, let him say, This has happened to me because of my sins. And if something good comes, say, It is through the providence of God. A brother asked Abba Sisois the Theban, Give me a word. And he said, What shall I say to you? I read the New Testament, and I turn to the Old. The same brother asked Abba Sisois of Petra about the saying which Abba Sisois the Theban had said to him, and the old man said, I go to sleep in sin, and I awaken in sin. They said of Abba Sisois the Theban that when the assembly was dismissed, he used to flee to a cell, and they used to say of him, He is possessed by a devil. But he was really doing the work of God. A brother asked Abba Sisois, What shall I do, Abba, 
for I have fallen. The old man said to him, Get up again. The brother said, I have got up again, but I have fallen again. The old man said, Get up again and again. So then the brother said, How many times? The old man said, Until you are taken up either in virtue or in sin. For a man presents himself to judgment in the state which he is found. A brother asked an old man, What shall I do? For I am troubled about manual work. I love making ropes, and I cannot make them. The old man said that Abba Sisois used to say, You should not do work which gives you satisfaction. Abba Sisois said, Seek God, and do not seek where he dwells. He also said, Shame and lack of fear often lead to sin. A brother asked Abba Sisois, What am I to do? He said to him, What you need is a great deal of silence and humility. For it is written, Blessed are those who wait for him, for thus they are able to stand. Abba Sisoy said, Let yourself be despised, cast your own will behind your back, and you will be free from care and at peace. A brother asked Abba Sisoy's, what shall I do about the passions? The old man said, Each man is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. A brother asked Abba Sisois to give him a word. He said, Why do you make me speak without need? Whatever you see, do that. One day Abba Abraham, Abba Sisois' disciple, went away on an errand. During his absence, the old man did not wish to be served by anyone else. Shall I let any other man except my brother get used to me? He refused till his disciples should return and put up with the hardship. They said of Abba Sisois that once when he was sitting down, he cried with a loud voice, O oh, misery! A disciple said to him, What is the matter, father? The old man said to him, I seek a man to speak to, and I do not find one. One day Abba Sisois left Abba Anthony's mountain to go to the outer mountain of the Thabaid, and there he stayed. Now there were some Miletians there who lived at Calamon of Arsinoi. Hearing that the old man had come to the outer mountain, some people wished to see him, but they said, what shall we do because the Miletians are on the mountain? We know that the old man does not suffer harm from them, but we are afraid lest, in wanting to meet the old man, we fall into the temptation of the heretics. So as not to meet the heretics, they did not go to see the old man. This is what they relate about Abba Sisois when he became ill. The old men were sitting beside him, and he spoke to some of them. They said to him, What do you see, Abba? He said to them, I see beings coming toward me, and I am begging them to leave me a little while so that I may repent. One of the old men said to him, And even if they allow you a respite, can you now profit by it and do penance? The old man said to him, If I am not able to do that, at least I can groan a little over my soul and that is enough for me. They said of Abba Sisois that when he came to Klisma, he fell ill. While he was sitting with his disciple in his cell, someone knocked at the door. Then the old man understood and said to his disciple, Abraham, say to him who is knocking, I am Sisois on the mountain, and I am Sisois on my bed. Hearing this, the one who knocked disappeared. Abba Sisois the Theban said to his disciple, Tell me what you see in me, and then I will tell you what I see in you. His disciple said to him, You are a good man, but a little hard. The old man said to him, You are good too, 
but you are not tough enough. They said of Abba Sisois the Theban that he did not eat bread. At the Paschal feast, the brothers bowed to him and invited him to eat with them. He answered them, There is only one thing I can do. Either I eat bread with you, or else I eat all the dishes you have prepared. They said to him, Eat only bread. And he did so. If anyone asked Abba Sisois about Abba Pambo, he would say, Pambo was very great in his works. Abba Sisois said to his brother, How are you getting on? And he replied, I am wasting my time, father. The old man said, If I happen to waste a day, I am grateful for it.